Hey there, this is Mr. Herman back with another video. This time we're going to be talking about how to make a scatter plot, a line of best fit, and then a prediction based on that line of best fit. Try and be as accurate as we possibly can. And when you make yours, uh, try not to make your line of best fit the exact same as mine. Try to make it based on your data. You can pause it, actually pause it right before it, and then we'll see how yours comes out afterward, and we'll compare it with the margin of error of 10%, like I talked about in class. So let's start by taking a look at this data. We have study hours here in test scores. It looks like it's pretty mixed up, so it's kind of hard to see a correlation right now. Although I do see with 7 hours of 100, and with uh, 2 you 75, 1 is 50, it looks like what would make sense is it would be a positive correlation, because the more you study, the better you do on a test. So let's take a look at this in the figure. Let's just come up with a title here. Title first is going to be, I'm going to make it Hours Studied versus Test Score. And then uh, after that, we're going to start graphing this after we get some kind of a scale here. So let's see here. We'll go with study hours first. That's over here. Usually time is on the bottom, so that makes sense. So hours studied, or I'm going to say study hours. Study hours. And over here, we'll put test scores. And then uh, from that, we'll come up with a scale. You don't need to start at zero, but it, it, you can. In this case, the numbers are pretty reasonably stretched out, so I'm going to actually start at zero down here and go one, just by ones. If you use graph paper, you'll see that it'll fit in two, uh, your own size. Also, I did make a handout of this. This actual handout you're looking at right now is just above the video. So if you look at the video, there's a link. clicks on a PDF of this document. You can just print this out and follow along with me without having to make this all on, gra on your own paper. It's a good study, study uh, aid you can use. Next up will be the test scores, and those can go to 100, so I'm going to start off with 10 down here. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and plot the points. So let's plot the points one at a time. I'll try and do it as quick as I can, but it'll take a little while. You can pause it if you want if I'm going too fast. Make it nice, nice dots, dark dots for each one. So that's how my data ends up looking. I'm going to use my clear piece of acetate, the same piece we used in class. Remember we said that a clear ruler makes it a little bit easier to see, and so that I can explain this a little better, I'm going to do it that way. We have how many test scores here do we decide? I don't remember what it was now. Um, let's count them up real quick. Ten. So ten, which means we want about five on each side. Remember you want to try and make it so that it's... Uh, even number of points on both sides. It's going through the data. This definitely looks like a positive correlation here too. And then also, more importantly than that really, is that we're making sure that the points are equal distance. Pairs of points on opposite sides are equal distance from the line. So let's see what I can get here if I go like this. And again, you can pause it now, make your line of best fit, make it really light maybe, and then come back and you can check it compared to mine. So I've got, if I go right here, I've got one, two, three, four here, and one, two, three, four there, which isn't bad. Um, I could slide it down like this a little bit and go through here. Then I'd have 5 and 5 on each side. That might be a little more accurate because the spacing looks like the distance-wise, this one would match up with this one. That's what I think I'm going to probably go with. So I'm going to go like this and make it right through. Remember, make your line straight and along right through the axis, both sides. Let's see how I can match things up. Remember, we talked about how these match up, so let's see here. This one is about the same distance away as this one here, maybe. I think this one here maybe. Let's see, this one matches up with, say, maybe this one. This one's further. Don't really have a match for that one. Maybe I could say that this one matches this one, and this one's more like this one here, so that's kind of close. 
these two here are pretty close, and then this one here is pretty close. So again, trying to make sure that we're as evenly spaced as possible there with them, so not too many that are much further from one side. What we just need to do now is make a prediction. So I'm going to make a prediction. I want to know um, if it's four, if I study for four hours, which is not a number in my data table, so let's say I study for four hours, what's going to be my grade on the test? It's kind of like we want to estimate. So to do that, we're going to take our four hours right here, which is on our hour scale, and I'm going to travel up with my ruler right to the line. Not very straight. Sorry about that. It slipped, but that would be the direction right there. They're good. And then after it hits the line, you go over the other way. Again, trying to be as accurate as you possibly can. This should be a right angle here. Remember that to make it accurate? And I end up over here, it looks like at about 74, 75. It's kind of right in there. It's kind of hard to say exactly. I'll say 75. So I get 75 on the score on a test. Not very good if I've studied four hours. So it looks like we need to study more than four hours for this test. Must be a hard one. And then after that, the next thing we're going to do is just give you the margin of error. Remember what we said to do with this? You don't have to do this. It's just so that you can see when you got this done that there's a range of scores that you would fall in for, for the good grade to get a positive amount on your test. We'll take the 75 and take 10% of that. And that gives us 82.5. And then below that would be 75 times 0.9. That's 10% off. It's 67.5. So in your estimate, you want to make sure that when you do this problem with me right now that you are between these two numbers. If not, your line's not as accurate and you're not, not really doing as good of a job drawing the points maybe as you could be.